What's up guys, I'm Chris of Emery and this is the first out of three videos where I'll show you guys a quick look on how I work with my main character uh, Nugget Boy in Character Animator. I'm beginning today with an introduction as well as how to set up the files for Character Animator and then in the next couple of videos we'll go in more into rigging and head turns and stuff like that. So let's get straight to it. Now, if you're not familiar with Nugget Boy, which you're probably not, in short, it's my very own animated online cartoon that I've been working on for a while now and that I plan to put up on Kickstarter pretty soon. I should also say that I'm by no means a character animator pro or anything like that. I'm just using the basic stuff. So first off, a quick look at the overall workflow that I use. I first create my character artwork in Photoshop. I then import it to character animator for the rigging. During the rigging I sometimes find that my character would look better with a minor adjustment. And that's when I start going back and forth between Photoshop and character animator until I'm satisfied. You see Photoshop and character animator works really well with each other. And any adjustments on my Photoshop file will be updated in character animator as soon as the file is saved. When the rig is done. I record my animation and I export the file. This is where I enter After Effects and put the exported file into my composition as a layer on its own. I cannot do any adjustments on my character in After Effects other than animate it as a layer on its own. So if I want any changes I'll just go back to Character Animator and re-record the animation and then replace the layer in After Effects. Record, import in After Effects, back to Character Animator, tweak, Record, replace the file, and repeat if necessary. So let's go back to the beginning. In Character Animator you have your project based on art that you've created on either Illustrator or Photoshop. It's up to you really which one you choose. My personal choice is working in pretty high res Photoshop files because that's where I feel the most creative and free. And when you're planning to use Character Animator your rigging starts already in Photoshop when you create your character. Yep, you see. Adobe Character Animator has this system where it recognizes layer names which makes it a really quick and awesome way to start your rig. So here's Nugget Boy in the Photoshop file ready to get exported to Character Animator. As you can see I already have my character drawn out as I mostly want to focus on the rigging in this tutorial. But a great tip if you're creating your character from scratch is to look at one of the pre-existing puppet templates to see how you should structure your character. In Character Animator you find them in the start panel. And note that they are in different levels of complexity. I'd say my Nugget Boy character is like a mix mixture of Chloe and the Wendigo template in complexity. When you click one of them, they will open in both Photoshop and Character Animator. If it's your first time working, I think looking at the Chloe puppet is a good start. I actually still haven't learned the exact way all the layers should be set up from my head. And it's absolutely not because it's a complex system. It's probably more that I'm a bit lazy and just know that I don't have to learn them since Character Animator has these great puppet templates that you always can start from and mimic. So yep, that's how I start, every time. I open one of the template puppets such as Chloe here in another window and just make sure when I draw in my character parts to structure every layer the exact same way. Now you may notice that my character has some more layers in there such as the backpack and the antenna and we'll look more into those things later on. But for the absolute basics, mimicking the layer structures from example, Chloe works great. And so once you have a character drawn out in Photoshop or Illustrator and structured as one of the template puppets, one thing you notice immediately is that the character main group has, or at least should have, a plus in front of it. This is a way of telling Adobe Character Animator that the group is to be moved as an independent object. In my Plus Nugget Boy group, I have a head and a body group. Let's start by looking at the body. In my character's body structure, I have right and left arm structured much as the Wendigo template with upper arm, lower arm and hand in each group. I also have torso and lower torso as well as both legs. In my body group I also have this backpack and antenna, both of them with a plus in front because I want them both to be independent objects in Character Animator. Moving on to the head, we immediately see that the head group has more layers and groups to it and it makes sense considering that there are a bunch of things going on in the face when talking and expressing different emotions. First off, I have these hair layers, all with plus signs in front of them. 
Then I have my left eyebrow group, also with plus sign in front of it, with three layers within. Worried, angry, and eyebrow. Character animator will automatically recognize the eyebrow layer in my plus left eyebrow group as the default left eyebrow of my character and have it react to my left eyebrow when I'm using the web camera function in character animator. The worried open parenthesis W exclamation mark close parenthesis lets character animator know that when I press W the worried layer should be activated and hide all other layers within my plus left eyebrow group. That's called a trigger. This is absolutely not the only way of creating a trigger layer in Character Animator. I could also just name it Angry without the extra stuff and create a trigger of it in the Triggers panel in Character Animator. But I personally like doing some of these things already in Photoshop, just by naming the layers. Same goes for the layer with an A for Angry. Angry Eyebrows layer will activate and all other ones in the group will be hidden. You may wonder why I have a special eyebrow layers for angry and worried when you can just have the camera pick up your expressions directly from Character Animator. Well, well, the camera input in Character Animator is really great and powerful feature. It doesn't give you those extreme looks that you may want in a ca cartoon. Sometimes realistic expressions simply aren't enough. I also use triggers for other stuff such as the helmet for this character that we'll look more into in the next episode and other stuff like that. The last thing to check before we go into character animator is the mouth group that contains a bunch of different layers. Make sure that you've named them all exactly as the ones in the template to have them act correctly when using the camera and sound input later on. When I create the different mouth shapes for my character, I copy the template ones into my project as an inspiration for my own ones and then I draw on top of that. So that's it for now. This was a little bit on how I implement Character Animator into my workflow and I, how I set up my Photoshop files. Next part, I'll import Nugget Boy into Character Animator and focus on rigging the body. Make sure to follow nuggetboy.tv on Instagram and all that, and see you next time.